All right, so we're going to start from the top and just do a quick lesson on the verb tense system. Today, our goal is just to cover the present tenses. If we have enough time, we'll also do the past tenses. So there are four present tenses, there are four past tenses, and there are four future tenses. However, you don't have 12 things to remember. You only need to remember present, past, and future, and all, all three of them have a simple, a continuous, a perfect, and a perfect continuous. So there's a present, simple, continuous, perfect, perfect, continuous, and then you've got the same for past, and you've got the same for the future. Present simple is the most common verb tense. Purpose is for describing general facts, things that are always true, and time doesn't matter. Right, so a common usage of this would be something like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. What are the verbs in this sentence? Rises, sets. Yep. Yes, this is true all the time, every day. So there's no time information in this. Okay, so now we've got tense. We've got verb tenses, which deal with time but we also have voice. We have active voice and we have passive voice. Active voice means the subject or the person or the thing that's responsible for the verb is in front of the verb and the object is after the verb. But passive voice means flipping those things around and we often do that when the subject is too obvious, it's a weak subject and we don't want to state the subject. So here's an example. These bagels are fresh. We bake them every morning. Okay, so the second part, we bake them every morning. That's a good opportunity to change it to passive voice. Our verb here is bake. What would be the passive version of we bake them every morning. We're gonna start with the object. So to transform active to passive voice, put the object in front of the verb. They bake them are bake every morning. Baked. Every morning. That's it. This is not past tense. This looks like past tense, but it's not. This is present simple passive voice. Because it's R before the verb? Yes. Okay. It is baked. They are baked every morning. So, sir, the active voice also looks like a past tense, we bake. No, we bake them. Present simple, no D. Oh, yeah. Good. We so bake what them. Is it, the present simple and the active voice? This is present simple active voice. We bake them every morning. The passive oh, voice is they are baked every morning. No, like difference between the present tense and the active voice. How can I differentiate that this sentence is a present from? Mm, Present uh, no, or so typically the subject, like we, goes before the verb, right? Okay. We bake them every morning. So you've got the person who's responsible for the action. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the object, the bagels, after the verb. Okay. Passive voice means you take the object, like the bagels, and you put it in front of the verb. Okay. So instead of saying, we bake them every morning, say they, the bagels, are baked every morning. And I don't need to say by us, because it doesn't matter. But if we say the sentence in the present simple, how would we say? We bake them every morning? No, not the bake, yeah, this one. 
Th this, this is present simple, and this is also present simple. They're both present simple. This one is active voice. Okay. This one is Please passive speak. voice, but they're both present simple. When you have a weak subject, that's a good opportunity to use passive voice. Like here's a, here's a baby sentence. Bakers bake the bread at 5 a.m. Okay. It's not police officers. It's not judges. It's not teachers baking the bread. It's bakers. So a better sentence would simply be, the bread is baked at 5 a.m. AM. And I'm not going to say by the bakers. I could, but that's baby English. Now, a lot of teachers don't like passive voice because it can be used to hide information and deceive the audience. I'll show you what I mean. Some people believe this new policy is a good idea. All right, so if a politician says that, let's say they come up with an idea for a new policy and they do some opinion polling. And let's say 5% of people think that their new policy is a good idea. 95% of people think it's stupid. So they're not lying when they say some people believe this new policy is a good idea. But that's not going to be very convincing, right? So what a politician will often do is hide this information, hide the subject, by transforming the sentence into passive voice. So what's the object here in this sentence? Policy? Yeah, this new policy. So we're gonna start with this new policy. Um, we have to use a dummy construction. So a dummy construction is something like, it is believed that this new policy is a good idea. It is believed is a passive construction with this dummy subject and it hides who believes. You see that? And when people hear something like this, they just assume that they mean most people believe. Yeah. So this is why it's deceptive. This is why a lot of English teachers tell you not to use it. But it's very appropriate to use passive voice when you have kind of a dumb subject like this. All right, this is better. The bread is baked at 5 a.m. Next one, present continuous. Example sentences, the doctor is now accepting new patients. What's the full verb in this sentence? Accepting. Is there a helper verb? ING. Well, this is the main verb. What's the helper verb? Yes. yes, yes. I am accepting, you are accepting, the doctor is accepting, we are accepting, they are accepting. It means now. Present continuous refers to what you're doing at this moment. So right now is the key. Yeah. The doctor is now accepting new patients. How would we transform this sentence into passive voice? Start with the object. New patients. New patients are accepted. Accepted by Doctors? Are your patients are accepted now? Are being accepted. Accepted. Okay. And we can put now in there. 
So the full verb is are being accepted. It has two helper verbs, are being, is being. I am being, you are being, we are being, they are being, he is being, she is being, it is being. And we don't need to say by the doctor, right? Because it's completely clear. Like if you have a medical practice, you're not going to put this on your sign. You're going to put new patients are now being accepted. Right? Because this is, this is a dumb subject. It's clear it's a doctor's office. It's not the baker is accepting new patients. We, we, we cannot written like by doctors? You can put by the doctor, but why would you? Yes. I mean, who, who accepts new patients? Doctor. Right, it's, it's not a mechanic, right? Yeah, it's obvious. So this, again, this goes back to tighten your prose. If you can get rid of words that add no value, that are just completely obvious, then you should get rid of them. These are both present continuous. This is present continuous active voice. This is present continuous passive voice. Next one is present perfect. We use this for experience and present consequences or results of past actions. Okay. Questions are commonly asked like this. Have you seen the new Christopher Nolan movie? Have you read the book? Have you ever visited Canada's Wonderland? You're asking about people's experiences. The police have arrested the criminal. Now, how is this different from past tense? The police arrested the criminal. What's the difference between these two? This one is have arrested this one is just arrested. So this is past simple, whereas this one is present perfect. Is there a difference okay. in meaning between this two, between these two. One is confirming the the police has like it is definitely happened. This one, the police have arrested the criminal. This one means the okay. criminal is now in jail or now in police custody. The police arrested the criminal, past simple, we'll get to it a little bit later, but past simple means something's finished. Yes. It's done. So if you say the police arrested the criminal, then your audience is gonna have a follow-up question. Well, what happened next? Was he convicted? Did he escape? Did they let him go? So that information is not in past simple. So you're trying to say that by adding half, it clarify is an action that is being solved? It, so present perfect is used for the, even though the action happened in the past. Uh -huh. Let's say the police arrested this guy last week. But when you say the police have arrested the criminal, it means the criminal is in police custody. If you just say the police arrested the criminal, this is past simple, and it refers to a fact that was true in the past, but it's no longer true. Okay. Right? So in this one, this is a little bit different. We don't know what happened to the criminal afterwards, whether they are still in police custody, whether they were released, whether they escaped, we just don't know. So it's a little bit different. Uh -huh. uh, if you say the kids have eaten all the cake, means the cake is gone. Mm -hmm. no I, that's right. 
I have asked him to fix his work. Means he still hasn't given it back to me. Right? I asked him yeah. in the past and I'm still waiting. The staff have asked the customer who is behaving rudely to leave. Means he's still there. Mm -hmm. Now let's transform these to passive voice. Uh, let's start with this sentence. The police have arrested the criminal. So this is a baby English example because it's police who arrest criminals. So putting the police as the subject here doesn't add a lot of value. So how would we transform this to passive voice? The criminal has been arrested. That's it. This is also present perfect. And the pronunciation for this is not bean like we're eating beans for dinner. The pronunciation is usually been. been. The criminal has been arrested. It's been arrested. Been. been. Like, like uh, how do you say garbage bin? Been. Throw, it in, throw it in the garbage bin. The criminal has been, been uh, no, <laughs> the criminal has been arrested. Been. Can, can you do even tighter, been? Okay, the criminal has been arrested. Yeah. In many, many words in English, Bin. with the short I sound, it's not in, if, it, is, it's in, if, it, is. And it's not been, it's pronounced bin. Bin. That's it. It's very short. Bin, it's a. If, it is been. That's right. Because we use this sound so frequently, it's really compressed. And this this uh, helper verb, it, because it's used so often, most people just compress it to been. The criminal has been arrested. When people speak, they will also usually say it like this. And it sounds like the criminal's been arrested. Uh -huh. And and people don't catch the apostrophe S when someone's speaking very quickly. The criminal's been arrested. Unless you know to listen for it. Uh, that's why people have a lot of grammar mistakes, actually. It's not because they don't know grammar. It's because they can't hear the grammar. And if you can't hear people using the grammar because of how quickly they say these little helper verbs, you're not going to pick up on it, and you're not going to model it correctly because you can't hear it. Once you understand how it works, then it's like your, like your listening resolution has increased. And now you can hear things that previously were unknown to you. It's like when children are first learning a language, before they ever know anything about reading, they have no idea where words begin and end. Everything you say to them is just like a big chunk of sound. And it's not until they start reading that they realize that there's breaks between words like that. It takes kids a while to realize that there's breaks. Sorry, it's not just when they start reading. It's, it takes them a while to realize there's breaks. It takes a while for the brain to pick up on that pattern that what you're saying is not just a single chunk of text, but it's composed of separate words. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when you're learning a new language. To you, when you hear that new language, you can't tell the difference like where words end and where new words begin. It's just blah, 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 blah. So here, the criminal has been arrested. The criminal's been arrested. Okay, how about the next one? The kids have eaten all the cake. The cake has been eaten. Good. The cake has been, has been eaten. Has been eaten. Been, 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 has been. Has been eaten. 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 Good. Yeah. I have asked him to fix his work. Uh, Chomri. Um, I have asked him to fix his work. What's the passive version of that? 
the the work I had um, passive voice you take the object and you put it in front of the verb I... so instead of him we got to change it to he he's been asked to asked to fix the fix his work mm -hmm. he has been asked to fix his work And you would say this if it's completely obvious who has asked him to do it. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I have asked him to fix his work. He's been asked to fix his work. It's clear what it means in both cases. Yeah. All right. The staff have asked the customer who is behaving rudely to leave. Uh, Olga. Okay. Um... He's been asking to leave. Okay. So the customer. The customer has been asked uh, who, who's behaving mm -hmm. rudely has been asked to leave. Good. And you don't need to say staff. by the staff, right? Because it's obvious if like who would be asking a customer to leave? It's obviously the staff. All right, so this is, all these examples that I'm giving, this is perfectly correct, but this is tighter. Okay, you gotta be familiar with both. For band seven grammar, you have to show that you know how to use passive voice. It's super common in English. It's very, very commonly used. Okay, so you have to be familiar with it. And then lastly, we've got perfect continuous. An example sentence is, I've been living in Toronto for a year. What is the complete verb in this sentence? Living, to live. So living is the main verb, but what are the auxiliary, what are the helper verbs? Have been. Have been. Yes. So I'm just going to make this the full version. I have been living in Toronto for a year. The action started in the past and is still ongoing. We have been learning since 9 a.m. We have been studying together for a few months. I have been attending class for a month. It means you're still in that class you started a month ago. Okay. And for perfect continuous, there is no passive voice. Okay, doesn't exist. That's the present tenses. Let's see how, let's get through the, the past tenses too. We can do these in, in a few minutes. So past tenses, just like the present tenses, we have simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. So it's the exact same terminology that you need to remember. It's only four things you need to remember. Past simple means something's done. It happened in the past, it's a finished action. That's all it means. Okay, so in this active voice example, the kids damaged the iPad when they knocked it off the table. What are the verbs in this sentence? Damage, knocked. Mm -hmm. And we can change this to passive voice. Okay. Go ahead, Olga. They, um, the, okay, the iPad was mm -hmm. damaged when they knocked 
of the table. So you can say when the kids knocked it off the table. So we need to say who did it now. Okay. But we can also change the second part to passive voice as well. Okay. When when it was knocked, it was knocked it off the table. Good. Pronunciation note. With ED endings, you only pronounce the E when the word ends with T or D. That's not a 100% rule, it's about 95%. Started, ended. This E is necessary to separate these two consonants. Without that E, you can't pronounce this. Start it, start it, it's impossible. You have to put that E in there. Same with ended. Ended it. You can't do it, you have to put that E in there. But for all other final sounds, you can pronounce this no problem. Damaged. 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 And here as well, knocked. Knocked. So if it doesn't end with T or D, try and pronounce it without saying the E. Okay. So not damaged, but damaged. Not knocked, but knocked. Damaged. Knocked. Good. <laughs> yeah. So it's for things that were finished in the past and they're no longer true. Okay, we've got past continuous. Here's an example sentence. The shippers damaged the product while they were shipping it. What is the, what are the verbs in this sentence? What's the first verb that you see? Damaged and shipping. Damaged. Damaged. So damaged is the first damaged. verb. And what's the second one? Shipping. Uh, is there a helper verb? Where? So this one is past simple. This one is past continuous. The continuous verbs always have ing. Continuous verbs always have ing. So why am I using these two different verb tenses? So past continuous is used for interrupted actions. The ongoing action takes past continuous, continuous. So the shipping process, right? That's the ongoing action. And the damage happened, bless you, and the damage happened at some point during that process. And the interruption takes past simple. There's no need to use past continuous if you don't have this kind of situation. Okay. If you're asking someone about their weekend, there's no need to say, hey man, what were you doing last weekend? Just use past simple. Hey man, what did you do last weekend? Oh, last weekend I went to the mall, last weekend I visited my friend. We use continuous for interrupted action. Like I would say, uh, if someone asks you why you didn't pick up the phone when they called, so you'd say, I didn't pick up the phone, I didn't answer the phone because I was eating dinner. Was eating was the ongoing action. Pick up would have been the interruption. Okay, we can change this one into passive voice. Let's do that.
this one is just going to be, you can do passive voice here. The phone wasn't picked up because dinner was being eaten. Uh, it just doesn't sound natural. It doesn't sound good at all. Okay. For that particular context, the, grammatically, yes, you can change it to passive voice, but don't do it. Okay. This one, however, is a good opportunity to change this one. It's a good opportunity to change this one to passive voice because what kind of people ship products? The shapers. Right. So this is not a strong subject. We don't need this. And then the product? Good. The product was damaged. Good. While they were shipping it? We don't need it. While it was shipped. Was being shipped. That's it. Was being been. Yeah. Remember, continuous always has the ing. So in the passive, you've got your ing in the helper verb. Was being shipped. And this is your past simple. So, Jan, how, how do you pronounce this being? Being, being. or being? Being. 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 Okay. I think it was being checked. Yeah, so on a pronunciation note, this one is your long E, being. And you need being. both those, yeah, you need both those vowel sounds, the B-ing. But the other one, bin. Okay, so that's, that's a big difference. The, the pronunciation is quite distinct. It's been damaged. It is being damaged. It oh. has been damaged. It was being uh, shipped, whatever. Yeah, yeah and in active voice also, we get sometimes this B double E N, been. So, in that context also, uh, should we say been there? Uh, typical sentence, for example, I'm so happy. Um, my husband, he has been promoted, or my wife has been promoted, has been. So there you have to say again, been or been? Been, been. like B-I-N. B -I -N. Okay, okay. People don't say he has been promoted, right? He's been. He has been, he's been. This is how people will pronounce it. Okay. And I'm not going to leave that there because some, someone's going to think it's spelled this way. <laughs> We've got past perfect. Past perfect, let me just explain it first. When you have two actions in the past, the earlier one takes past perfect. The later one takes past simple. And many people do not use past perfect, especially when they're speaking. This is far less common than past simple. Here's a couple examples, active voice. Before I moved to China to teach English, so here's my past simple. I had worked at several schools in Canada. This is my past perfect, had worked. Does that make sense? And had worked here, it's like, think of it as present perfect, but from a past perspective. So if I say, I have worked at several schools. I'm just referring to my general experience, that I'm not brand new. I have the experience of working at several schools. Right, very common question during a job interview. 
have you worked in this field? Oh yeah, I've worked at several businesses in this field. Had worked is the same thing, but before a past reference point. So before I moved to China to teach English, I had this experience of working at several schools in Canada. Uh, Chamri, this is the sentence you're asking about. In 1995, people had made yeah. approximately 2 billion minutes of calls on mobile, and this number grew, this is your past simple, to around 13 billion by 1999. Okay. Right, this was the earlier event, this was the later event, and they're both in the past. Okay. You got 99 and 95. Okay. The staff kicked the customer out of the store because they had asked him to put on a face mask and he refused. So this is your past simple. What happened before the past simple event? I asked. Right, so the asking came before the kicking. <laughs> that just sounded kind of funny. <laughs> okay. So this As, is one of, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. This is one of my mistakes. And normally what I tend to say is the staff kick the customer out of the store because they ask him to put on a face mask and he refused. Yeah, and, and that's and that's how most and most people would say it the way you just did. Most people don't use this, especially because it's crystal clear what the time information is from the context, right? If you don't put this, no one's going to be confused. No one. That's why this tense is not very commonly used, especially when people are speaking. Okay. The boss fired him because he had asked for a raise. Right? Asking came first, firing came second. The boss fired him because the boss had asked him to improve his sales performance and he couldn't. So Ian, uh, you mean to say, if we say the boss fired him because he asked for a raise, also correct in now con nowadays? Uh, a lot of people will not say had asked. The boss fired him because he asked for a raise. So when speaking, if we say like that, uh, it's not a mistake uh, that we do if uh, a native speaker hears us, right? No. No. No, no one's even. Are... No one's even going to notice. But when it's come to writing, we have to always mention that, aren't we? You should. Okay. Now, when people are speaking. It's usually going to be like this. And this is why you don't hear this. Okay. The boss fired him because he'd asked for a raise. Mm -hmm. Unless you're listening for it, you're not going to hear this tiny little duh. He'd asked for a raise. He'd asked for a raise. You almost can't hear it. Let's, turn, let's uh, change some of these into passive. Um... Okay, this one. Olga, can you change this one to passive voice? Okay. <clears throat> the customer, the customer. Um, was kicked out um, of the store because Mm. Because he mm -hmm. had been refused. A uh, different verb. Because he had been asked mm -hmm. to put on a face, to put on a face mask. And he refused. Mm -hmm. And the rest is the same. Mm -hmm. 
this one, uh, you're not going to change this to a raise had been asked for. It's awful. It just sounds awful. But you could change. This is just going to be past simple. He was fired because he had asked for a raise. All right. So we're not going to change the past perfect to uh, passive. It doesn't sound good here. But this one we can change to passive voice. Both, uh, both the past simple and the past perfect. Uh, Zuby. So we've got past simple. Then we've got past perfect. And the rest we're going to leave as is. Okay, go ahead. Oh, Zuby might have stepped away. How about Kelly? Kelly again. Yeah. Um, he was fire. Mm -hmm. Because he he was fired because he was so he was asked is past simple passive voice we want past perfect passive voice he has been asked Good. Had been asked. He has been asked is present perfect. He has been asked to leave. That's present perfect. He had been asked to leave. Past perfect. Past perfect. He has. Improve his sales performance and the rest is the same. Yeah. He was fired. Past simple because he had been asked to improve his sales performance. And there's your bin, had been asked. Yeah. And again, when people are speaking, it's going to sound like... He'd been asked, yeah. He'd been asked. So it's really, really tightly blended. He'd been asked, he'd been asked. I barely listened that bin. They had been... I'll bet you, you're all going to start noticing this all the time now. Right? Now that you know what to listen for, and now that you know what to look for, you're going to start noticing these things all over the place. When you're reading, when you're listening, when you're watching TV, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. your ears are going to start picking these things up now. Okay, and we've also got past perfect continuous. So this one is a little bit different. It, this one is about ongoing action that ended when another action started in the past. Now, what the heck does that mean? Okay, so a good contrast paragraph would be this one. Uh, sorry, a good contrast uh, set of sentences. This one, you need to look at both past perfect and continuous to see the difference. Past perfect, before I moved to China to teach English, I had worked at several schools in Canada. This one is past perfect continuous, again, continuous or the ING ones. Before I moved so this is the same, to China to teach English, I had been working at three schools in Canada. So the past perfect is about experience. I had the experience of working at several schools in Canada at some point before I moved to China. In this one,
before I moved to China, I had been working at three schools in Canada right up until I moved to China. So if you hear this one, it means I had three jobs before I moved to China. Uh, that's mean, Ian, that the person was working on three jobs at the time he, uh, he decided to move to Canada. Yes, or China, yep. Before I moved to Canada, I had lived in Poland, England, and China. Just making this up. Okay. Before I moved to Canada, this is the past action. Past perfect, I had lived in, I had the experience of living in these three places at some point. I'm not telling you what order I lived in them. Right, obviously I couldn't live in three places at the same time. It's just at some point before I moved to Canada, I spent time in these three places. Excuse me, sir. Yep. Uh, in sentence above, it was very, it was fired because he had been asked, why not uh, with, with the bean, with the bean, why we didn't put ing here? It had been he asking. Had been. Uh, why ask? Yeah. Why not ing with ask? Had been. Asking to improve his sales performance. Okay. Because you know, use for the continuous tense, isn't it? Perfect continuous, well, uh, past. So what's this verb tense had been asking? What's this it's verb tense called? Perfect continuous. Past perfect continuous. That's the one we're on right now. Yes. And what's this verb tense? Uh, this been is confusing. Had asked is past simple. But this been is confusing here. This is past perfect passive voice. This one is past perfect continuous active voice. So in passive voice, we also use, uh, okay, third form, okay, the B, the bin. See, this, this is the passive asked. Yeah. He was asked, he has been asked, he had been asked by someone, by his boss, by the teacher. Okay. This one is active voice. I had been asking the boss for a raise and he fired me. This means like over and over again. So I was thinking then whenever you use been, These are close. I had asked for a raise and the boss fired me. I had been asking for a raise and the boss fired me. These are both active voice. This one is past perfect. This one is past perfect continuous. Any difference in meaning? No, it's very much the same. Okay. Yeah, it's a very subtle difference. This means like once. I asked him for a raise once. I cannot see your screen. Yeah. Okay. This one is I asked once. This one indicates that I was asking repeatedly. Something I was doing, remember ING is something you were doing over a period of time. All the continuous ones are over a period of time, not a single instance. I had been asking for a raise. It, that indicates to the audience that you were doing this repeatedly. 
Mm-hmm. Why'd the kid break his leg? Oh, he'd been jumping on the couch. It's mean like <clears throat> continuously doing the same action. <clears throat> I see. Uh, on to, I don't know, something dangerous. Or he had been jumping on the couch, you know, over a period of time, and then he finally slipped and broke his arm. This is once. This is repeatedly. Yeah. Yeah. Now I understand. So uh, we have the boss fired him because he had been asking for a raise. What would be the passive of that? So we can't do the, the passive had been asking. There is no passive for had been asking for uh, past perfect continuous. Right? Okay. He was fired because he had been asking for a raise. You can change this to passive voice, but there is no passive for this. Okay. Okay. The perfect. <laughs> yeah. The, the perfect continuous tenses. Uh, present perfect continuous, past perfect continuous, future perfect continuous, which we'll see next time, there is no passive voice. Uh, yeah, and just to clarify here, this was the, the, uh, the example we, were, we saw earlier. Before I moved to Canada, I had lived in Poland, England, and China. This is experience. Before I moved to Canada, I had been living in England. This means that I was in England right before I moved to Canada. Do you see the difference between these two? Yeah. Right. So this is an answer to the question, well, before you came to Canada, where had you lived? That's how the question would be constructed. Before you came to Canada, where had you lived. That's your past perfect. And the person here is asking about just different places you'd lived in. This is about experience. Okay, and here's your answer. And for this question, what would, uh, for this answer rather, what question would correspond to this answer? Where have you been living? Mm-hmm. Where had you been living? Yeah. I had been living in blah, blah, blah. Yep. And the person is asking where you were directly before you came to Canada. And again, Many people will just say, where were you living? Before you came to Canada, where were you living? Yeah. Yeah, I heard that before. Yep. This is the technically correct form, but people don't get fussed about this, especially when you're speaking. Uh, yeah, and also people say, where have you lived? Instead, where had you lived? Yes, that's right. Where have you lived is present perfect. And I'm just asking in general. So I currently live in Canada. I have lived in Canada, England, Poland, China. I have lived in these four places. I'm talking about experience. What movies by Christopher Nolan have you seen? Which Star Wars episodes have you watched? Which Star Wars episodes (laughs) have your kids watched? Right? Yeah. So that's, that's present perfect, and you're asking about experience. We use past perfect when we want to know about experience before a past time. Right? Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, uh, before 
you came before you came up with this solution what other solutions had you tried came up with this phrasal verb would be past simple had you tried is past perfect so you came up with the solution in the past so i'm asking you what you tried before you came up with that in the past even before that it's asking yes so it's different from what solutions have you tried i'm not asking for the sum total of all your solutions that you've tried i'm only asking about the solutions you tried before you came up with that solution in the past so it's it's a it's a more complicated thing that i'm asking about okay oh uh, <clears throat> yeah i have another question um yesterday i went through a mississauga news and i came across some sentence sentence which i feel it's wrong so i paste that uh, in my uh, what do you call this uh, uh, chat box so if i send it to you can you please see whether it's wrong or whether i'm wrong okay uh, where I is it? it okay I let's it. let's have the covid okay so the the uh, the right is steve conwell so it says covid 19 cases across p region have risen 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 pronounce risen risen consistently since the start of september but as per your uh, uh, teaching you said when you have uh, present perfect you cannot mention a time because he was since. writing since but he, he was writing that yesterday october 2nd so september is already gone now yeah that's fine the the keyword is since you can't use you can't use present perfect if you mention a specific past time since is okay means it's still happening yeah you can you can't say i have seen that movie last week this is no good mm-hmm. you have to say i saw that movie last week mm-hmm. is it two different things uh, a typical question is have you seen that movie and i'm asking about experience next question would be when did you see it and here i'll answer here i'm expecting a past simple reply i saw it last week yeah here i'm expecting present perfect a common question would be which uh, let's say someone's a newcomer which tourist attractions have you visited since coming to canada Uh-oh. which attractions have you visited since coming to since you came to oops mm-hmm. i have visited well since last september i have visited the cn tower niagara falls the ago etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so it's not a like past time because of the since word it referring even to now right mhm mhm and that's the key word here okay thank you he could put have been rising because it's an ongoing action that hasn't stopped yet have been rising okay so present perfect continuous would be appropriate here have been have been rising yeah it's mean continuously yeah and still hasn't stopped so in that in that ta- in that context it's okay to mention any time right when you say have been uh it means there's a starting point and it means it has not ended that's the key idea there's a starting point in the past 
and it has not ended yet. Yeah, yeah. Right, like I have been living in Toronto for a month. I started a month ago, it's still true. Yeah. The cases started rising at the start of September and they're still increasing even more. Yeah. Okay. That's it for today. Thank you so much, Ian. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was okay. a treasure this. Thank you. Bye.